Hello everybody, welcome to another development video of Line of Judah where we discuss the development process of the game. Thank you all so much for being here. I first wanted to start this video off with an apology to those who have been watching and you didn't receive a video last month. And I apologize for that because I was going through, through some things. I had some family issues that I needed to take care of and some personal issues as well. I won't dive too deep into the subject, but I want you all to know that we are still developing the game. The game is still in development. I have not stopped caring about the game. I have not stopped working on the game. I've been periodically working on it throughout the last month, and I've been looking into tools that I have had but never really used that I feel that could enhance the workflow of the game. And those are kind of the things that I wanted to talk about in this video. These tools that I am currently working on and learning are Substance Designer and Houdini Engine. But before that, a bit of bad news. Our game is no longer a third-person game. It's going to be an isometric game. Still open world, action adventure, RPG, but it's going to be isometric. Very much like Link's Awakening, um, but that's just the camera angle. There's going to be a difference in style when it comes to the art. Now, with that being said, um, another bit of bad news is that I've completely lost the last project and I've had to start anew. You might be thinking, oh, why? Well, when I was in my adventures, I thought in order to fix one of the plugins, I had to upgrade my engine to the new 5.3 version of the engine and it ended up doing the complete opposite of what I thought it would do completely destroyed the project I tried building from source manually several times but even after doing so I was still receiving the message so with that being said I wouldn't be upset I wouldn't be in shock I feel like everything that's happening is happening for a reason I know it sounds strange but I really feel like God is allowing these things to happen because he wants the game to move in a certain direction, and this is how it's going to happen. So I'm not upset about it. I'm excited about it. I have a way better understanding of the engine now. Development is going to be going just as it was last time, hopefully quick, but I want to take the time that I need that is necessary to make this game the best game that I can deliver to you, the audience. But for now, let's jump back into the tools that I have been working on. And one of those tools is Substance Designer. The great thing about Substance Designer is that it allows for you to create procedural textures. And why procedural textures are so great is because they allow you to create many various variations of the same texture without leaving your engine. So, for instance, look at this grass right here. I've created this texture, I've imported it, I've created an instance of it, and I have it plugged into the world terrain. Normally, if you wanted to make a change to the texture, you would have to go into your software, leave the engine, make changes, export it, bring it back into engine, re-upload it, so on and so forth, until you got what you like. Now, I have that ability in engine. As you can see here on my right, we have a texture with a ton of variables that are exposed. And this allows me, just by moving these, to create variations in the texture instantly on the fly. And that's what makes Substance Designer so powerful. And it's one of the reasons why I decided to incorporate it into my workflow. Because I feel like later down the road, when I am world building, it's going to make my life a lot easier. And this is just one of the many various examples. They have a lot more examples online. I will leave a link of a channel in the description of this video that really shows the possibilities of Substance Designer and why I think it's such a great asset to my workflow. Let's talk about another engine or another tool called Houdini Engine. The reason why Houdini Engine is so powerful is for the same reason that Substance Designer is so powerful. Except in Houdini's case, instead of using procedural textures or working on procedural textures, we're working on procedural models. And just like Substance Designer, instead of moving 
back and forth between softwares were able to do this in Engine. I'm still learning a lot with Houdini Engine, but here's a tool that I recently made. This here is my fence tool. This fence tool is procedurally made, and while at its amateur state right now, there's a lot that you can do with it. There's still more that needs to be done, but just to give you an idea of why this engine is so powerful, I'm going to use this. So this is my fence tool, and as you can see, it's a fence. Um, and the cool thing about this is that you're able to create a fence based off of this curve. I can manipulate and move it and change the way it's facing. If I hold down Alt and drag out, I can create more. And, you know, essentially, I can create a lot of variations of this fence just by doing this. And that's just one case scenario. You can do this with foliage. You can do it with buildings. You can do it with props. You can do it with anything. And that's one of the reasons why I've been learning Houdini. All in all, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done on Line of Judah. But despite all that, I still can't help but feel thankful for all of you who watch this video and subscribe to this content. Thank you so much for supporting my dreams and supporting this game. If you haven't subscribed, please make sure to subscribe and like the video. It helps out a lot, and I hope you have a great and beautiful day. But until next time, I'll see you later. Have a good day, and God bless. Peace.